Welcome to Android Weekly on Butterscotch.com, the show that delivers all the Android news that matters to you, or at least to me, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin. In this episode, Honeycomb and Gingerbread have a lot in common, Android disarray versus Apple organization, and Android blocks rooted users for movies. Also, Kate Abraham brings us her review of the blogger app for Android. But first, we pay homage to Hover, the sponsor that makes Android Weekly and other great Butterscotch.com shows possible. Hover.com is the easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. Your domain name is your own online identity, and it lets you take control of what people see when they look you up. Whether it's a potential employer, a would-be social network friend, or that guy you just exchange business cards with. If someone's Googling you on Bing, do you really want their first online impression of you to be an unfortunate Facebook picture of you hitting the beer bong back in college? No, that comes later, after they know you better. Get 10% off domain registration by using the coupon code hover.com android. On to the business at hand. Android fragmentation is a favorite buzz phrase of Apple fanboys, Stevie J, and, well, realistic Android users who enjoy the Android experience, but that really wish Google would tidy up a bit. Honeycomb has always been a little confusing. It's a full version jump from the 2.x present Android OS into 3.0, but still both the 2.0 and the 3.0 Android OSs are current and continue to be supported. Ice Cream Sandwich is supposed to unite all Android devices under a common 2.4 banner, and yet many Android tablet users are awaiting their update to Honeycomb 3.1. You're forgiven if your eyes are glazing over. It turns out there's a lot more in common than anyone realized. We recently posted in the Android news feed that Honeycomb 3.1 is really just a reskin of Android Gingerbread 2.3. The code base is the same. Honeycomb is just a tablet tweak of Gingerbread. On the XDA Developer Forum, a recent video post proves the point. On a Honeycomb tablet, simply change the pixel density to any value over 160 ppi, reboot, and you're presented with the Gingerbread UI. Change the value back to something below 160 ppi, and you're right back into Honeycomb. Question though, now that the three dot version numbering has been taken for Honeycomb, and Ice Cream Sandwich is supposed to be the universal tablet slash smartphone OS, where do you go from Android 2.9? Like it or lump it, the iPad does a lot of things right. We're not fans of the closed, almost dictatorial nature of the relationship between Apple and its developers, Apple and its users, and Apple and, well, just about everyone really. However, the iPad is without a doubt the very picture of tablet success. Android tablets continue to see release the best the iPad in raw specs while still managing to undercut Apple's iconic tablet in price. However, adoption is slow. The CEOs of both Intel and Nvidia recognize this fragmentation and yet continue to push Android as the platform of choice. Naturally, neither company's chips reside in the iPad. The tablet wars are being likened to the earliest days of the Mac versus PC debate. Intel CEO suggests that the Android Alliance, as well as moves like unifying Android under one version, will go a long way to effectively defrag the Android market. If you've got a rooted Android device, you're out of luck when it comes to using the recently released Android Movie Service. Predictably, digital rights management, DRM, is to blame. Rooted users are apparently blocked from Google Movies for Android, as in theory, rooted users could access the movie files and in turn pirate them. Google should have been able to explain to the powers that be that blocking rooted Android users isn't the answer. As we point out in our news feed, anyone savvy enough to root their Android phone and install a custom ROM is very likely savvy enough to fire up a torrent client and grab any movie they want. Presumably this move comes from pressure put forth by the Motion Picture Association of America, the MPAA, as it tries desperately to maintain a hold on the works its members purvey. For our review of the day, we throw it over to Kate Abraham, whose blog is always up to date thanks to the Blogger app for Android. Blogging has been a popular online activity for many years, with Blogger being one of the more popular platforms. With Blogger's mobile app, you can now post directly to your blog, directly from your smartphone. The free Blogger app for Android is super easy to use. Once you launch the app, click on the pen icon to create a new post. From here, you can use your phone's built-in keyboard to type content. It's also easy to add photos to your post, either by taking them with the phone's built-in camera or by choosing one from your gallery. Just click on the icons underneath your content. If you add labels to posts, you can also do this by clicking on the labels box. Once you are finished, you can either publish directly from your phone to your blog or save the post for later editing. You also have the option of deleting posts. If you want to see a list of your posts, click on the icon on the top right hand side of the screen to navigate through your items. By clicking on one, you can also edit a published post. And if you want to view your blog online, just click on your menu key and click view blog. Well, that's all the news that's fit to Google for this week. For full show notes, links, other Android weekly episodes, and to subscribe to the show, visit butterscotch.com. Until next week, I'm Andrew Moore Crispin.